There are six basic classifications of airspace in the United States. Classes A, B, C, D, E, and G. Out of these, G is the only type of airspace that is uncontrolled. All other types of airspace are controlled and you will need permission to fly in them. Class A airspace generally begins at 18,000 feet MSL and goes up to 60,000 feet MSL. And because of this, you will not need to deal with Class A airspace in your normal commercial drone work. Know that it exists, but otherwise don't worry about it for the Part 107 test. All right, like I just mentioned a minute ago, Class G airspace is the only uncontrolled airspace. When you think Class G, you should think G for general. Class G airspace should be recognized as the absence of another kind of airspace, so don't go looking for it on your sectional markings. It doesn't exist in the legend. Class B airspace. Uh, when you think Class B airspace, think B for busy. These are super busy airports like LAX, Hearts Field in Atlanta, or JFK and LaGuardia in New York. Class B usually has three rings around it, each one larger than the last. You should picture an upside down wedding cake on top of the airport, and as a drone pilot, you're going to be most concerned with the innermost ring of the airspace. That's the one that extends down to the ground. It's shown on a sectional chart with a solid blue line. Class C airspace. When you think Class C airspace, think C for center. It's not a super busy airport like Class B, but it's not super slow either. Class C typically has two rings, just like another upside down wedding cake, only this time it just has the two layers. Drone pilots, again, are usually most concerned with the innermost ring. It's represented on a sectional chart with a solid magenta line. Class D airspace. When you think Class D airspace, think D for doesn't do commercial, because these airports generally do not fly commercial passenger planes. They're more for general aviation. This doesn't mean they aren't busy though, so don't be confused. Class D will usually have just one layer. It'll look like a cylinder over top of the airport, and it's not always shaped as a perfect circle. It is represented on a sectional chart, and it has a dashed blue line around it. Finally, Class E airspace. When you think Class E airspace, think E for everywhere. It's the most common type of airspace in the United States, and while it has a lot of variations, the ones you're going to need to recognize the most as a drone pilot show up on a sectional chart in two ways. It's also different than the other types of airspace because Class E is measured in above ground level, or AGL, instead of mean sea level MSL. The first type of Class E airspace shows up as a dashed magenta ring, which means that Class E airspace extends down to the ground within that ring. You will need permission to fly here. The second kind of Class E airspace shows up as a faded magenta ring, which means that Class E airspace starts above 700 feet AGL and extends upwards. You will not need permission here unless you are flying near a tower or a building that legally lets you get above 700 feet AGL. This video is just a short primer on recognizing airspace for drone pilots. I have a free guide available at thelegaldrone.com on airspace and everything else you would need to know to pass your part 107 exam. There's a link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, it was helpful for you, give me a thumbs up um, and go ahead and subscribe.